We are looking for a man with a sense of proprietorship to fill a position of trust and who is seeking self-respect, but one who has it. A man who acts quite naturally as though the world were his, as though it were his business and his privilege to keep it arranged for others to enjoy. It does not matter to us what he may be doing for a living at the present time, so long as he has the impulse to care for what is humanly valuable, no matter what it may be or whose it may be. Men who are like that know each other when they meet, and when they part, they make mental notes to keep in touch with one another. So you may know someone who will be interested in the position we have to offer. It is a secure position in an already large and growing market. It is a position from which a man can exercise his sense of proprietorship to the fullest possible extent, and quite profitably too, if he knows how to manage himself. Well above the national average, well into five figures annually, perhaps even higher than $30,000 a year. If he can learn the art of management well enough to manage others as well as himself. At the present time, the man we seek may be working in a bank or servicing a soft drink route. He may be selling insurance or he may be working in a service station, perhaps managing one. He may be a construction worker. He may be in his early 20s or he may be noticeably more mature. If his company provides him with a business card, if his business is to serve others, and if he likes the idea and is succeeding at it, he may be ready for this. What we want to offer this man is a standard oil service station worth $120,000 or more, frequently a lot more. We want him to lease it from us and become a proprietor in his own right. What we want is another man like John Smith. John Smith used to be, well, let's say, a white-collar worker. He knew autos about the way a driver would, and he knew the service station business about the way a customer would. That is, he knew what customers and drivers wanted. He knew that we would and could help him with our training program and on-the-job training and counseling services to learn what else he needed to know as a proprietor. And he also knew that he would be associating with one of the most alert and progressive merchandising firms in the oil business, with strong support from nationwide advertising. He could invest a few thousand dollars, which he gathered by drawing on both his savings and his credit. This he put mostly into hand tools and merchandise for resale. He did not have to buy outright the permanent equipment, such fixtures as the air compressor, pumps, and lift, which we own and maintain for him. In fact, Standard Oil has a variety of stock inventory and financial plans to put a good man in business. He expected gross sales to exceed $150,000 during his first year. This includes the sale of gasoline, motor oil, automotive services, tires, batteries, and accessories. As a matter of fact, they did, and his annual gross sales have continued to increase since that first year. He is now operating one of the largest of the independent retail businesses in his community. John Smith's business has kept growing because he has kept on attracting and earning a growing share of a growing market. He uses every valuable way he and Standard Oil together, or he on his own, can conceive for promoting a flow of today's traffic into his station and for merchandising the goods and services he offers there. The foundation of any Standard Oil dealer's retail business is the reputation of the Standard Oil products he carries and merchandises. 
along with a large number of motorists who carry Standard Oil credit cards, which are used for purchases amounting to one half the total retail sales in some service stations. The basis of John's success has been his ability not only to attract business which keeps coming to his station because it is John Smith's station, but also to attract the business of travelers who keep coming because his station has a welcome look. It is a standard oil station and the brightest, cleanest, most complete and most capable looking station in sight. He has exclusive charge customers whose credit cards are good only at his station, but with Standard Oil still extending the credit and doing the billing. As a matter of business policy, and as his own boss, he sets his own policies. He keeps the goods for sale in his station representative of a Standard Oil station, makes his own decisions as to what and how much of anything to buy for resale and does not let anyone else make those decisions for him. Although he thought in terms of automobiles when we first talked to him and wondered if he could learn to work with tools and to like doing so, it was not long after he had become an independent businessman that he realized he was thinking in terms of people, as any executive might, and was liking what he had to do. Whatever he has found it unprofitable to learn, but profitable to offer, he has hired skilled hands to do. And has enrolled them in the Standard Oil training program to be trained in the ways of Standard Oil, as he was trained for his job. The more of a manager he became, the more he came to depend upon personally selected and well-trained helpers. Just as the community came to depend upon him, not just the business world, but the whole community is continually on the lookout for good men to be good neighbors and draws upon their time and energies as heavily as they will permit. Today, to add to the self-respect he brought with him, John Smith has added the respect of the others he serves, of his suppliers, his employees, his community, and his customers. He is thinking of buying a new, larger home and can afford to do so without jeopardizing the college funds he is steadily setting aside for his children. Not everyone can do or wants to try to do what John Smith has done. The days and the hours are long. They involve being in and out of doors in all kinds of weather, getting dirty, and being on call even after hours. One must enjoy trying to make a business grow in order to enjoy this one. There may be price wars to contend with and to avoid. There will surely be temptations to overextend oneself or to undertry. There is no guarantee of success for the simple reason that a standard oil dealer is an independent businessman and guaranteed success doesn't fit with the idea of independence. When one comes in, the other goes out. John Smith has been lucky. That is to say, we have been lucky. To find a man like the John Smiths we have already found and they form quite an army of self-respecting men, comes as close to a guarantee of success as any company can hope for. That is why we have been telling you about him. We can use another one like him. And you may know the very man we seek. You will help that man and us by bringing us together.